Hello, I'm Megan Schiller from KDKA TV News, and this is your KDKA News Now update. I've got your top headlines and the latest weather. We're hearing from the mother of a four year old boy struck in a hit and run. Police say the driver, after initially taking off, later confessed, but the boy's mother told KDKA's Mamie Ba that's not good enough. Elijah Rivers' mother can't help but think it could have been a lot worse. After days at Children's Hospital, she tells me she's thankful to be going home with him. The four-year-old hit by an SUV four days ago, walking out of UPMC Children's Hospital with his mother. It's my miracle child. Scars all over his face, a reminder of a crash that could have ended tragically. It could have been so much worse. Elijah Rivers was admitted to UPMC Children's Hospital Thursday in critical condition after a hit and run on Webster Avenue involving this white Ford Explorer. My son feel like you did it on purpose. My son tells me every day, Mommy, he knows how bad it is to hit a kid. That wasn't no accident. Investigators say 74-year-old James Phelps was behind the wheel of the SUV. Video shows the vehicle stopped for a moment after hitting the four-year-old who laid unconscious and then continue on Webster toward downtown. You seen my child fly in the air and you just didn't care. So I hope, <laughs> hope you stay in jail for the rest of your whatever's left. According to this criminal complaint, Phelps was taken into custody Friday after he was pulled over because officers recognized the vehicle. Investigators say while being interviewed about the incident, he admitted to hitting Elijah and apologized. For Elijah's mother, it doesn't mean much. I'm glad you felt remorseful, but if you really felt remorseful, why would you pull off? Phelps is facing multiple charges, including aggravated assault, careless driving, and failure to stop, just to name a few. Reporting from UPMC Children's Hospital, Mimi Ba, KDKA TV News. It's become as much a part of the game as the game itself. Online sports books will let you bet on just about anything before and during the Super Bowl. For most people, it may just be an added dimension to a sporting event. But KDK lead investigator Andy Sheehan is finding that more and more young men appear to be developing gambling addictions. It's not just who will win or lose, cover the spread, or the over-under. By the time of the game, they're going to have hundreds of different bets. Who will score the first touchdown in the game? Here's Christian McCaffrey, the running back for the 49ers. Online sports books let you bet on everything from how many sacks to how long it'll take to sing the national anthem to how many television cutaways there'll be of Taylor Swift. Here's the coin toss, heads or tails. Longtime gaming writer Gary Rothstein says it's mostly just for fun. The vast majority of people can handle it well. They're putting down their 10 or 20 or $50 uh, on a game in a way that they can handle it. But to others, especially more and more young men, the accessibility and almost limitless betting options have become addictive. It's like the crack cocaine of gambling. With a bet on any league, any game, any time, as close as the phone in their pocket, more are facing massive debt and stalled careers. The young male sports better. This is the new opioid epidemic. Since its legalization three years ago, sports betting in the state has taken off. Last year, Pennsylvanians legally wagered $7.7 .7 billion on sports, up from $7.2 billion in 2022. Betters, mostly young men, lost $458 million to sportsbook operators. The Pennsylvania Problem Gambling Helpline has seen a major spike in young sports bettors asking for help, and gambling counselor Jody Bechtold says her practice has been overwhelmed with requests for treatment from some as young as 18 who are tens of thousands of dollars in debt. People in their late 20s and 30s are saying, I got to stop this. This is causing so much devastation. It's causing problems with work, with family. I owe so much money. How am I going to pay all this back? Hold up. Instantly, DraftKings showing up big for the Super Bowl. And some public health advocates even say sports books are actively targeting young men with enticements like in-game betting and free play, like this ad for an instant $200 in credit on a $5 bet. Absolutely. That is their target population. That's where they're, they're going to grow their market. A public health advocacy group in Massachusetts has filed a class action suit against the sports book DraftKings over a $1,000 sign-up bonus they call unfair and deceptive. 
saying bettors need to make a $5,000 deposit and gamble $25,000 within 90 days to claim it. Executive Director Mark Gottlieb compares such free play offers to the tactics of drug pushers. The goal, of course, is similar to the heroin dealer. It's to um, get their customer to continue to use the product as much as possible until um, you know, they're, they, they can't not use it because they've developed an addiction. I do it in moderation. I do know some people do it too much. Pitt students like Zach Harmer tell me they try to enjoy making a $10 bet on their phone, but avoid the snares of free play. And like all the promotions, I mean, they dress them up to look so amazing, and there's all these different bets where you can get money back for free, things like that. And it's really, you know, they try to make it look very nice, but it's really just getting people addicted. Now, I reached out to both DraftKings and FanDuel about this report, but neither sportsbook responded. But should there be more safeguards in place to prevent young people from getting in too deep? We'll take a look at that tomorrow night at 6. Andy Sheehan, KDK TV News. And now here's First Alert meteorologist Ray Patlin with a look at your weather for the week ahead. By Super Bowl Sunday, we'll be uh, breaking up those clouds and you'll get some sunshine working in there. But uh, the lights in the dome, the dry weather in the dome, that's going to continue no matter what. Here we have clear skies. Beautiful, beautiful day today. What a Monday. I'll tell you that 42 current temperature feels like 37 because of that little breeze out of the northeast. We're quite dry at the moment and through the day uh, we saw the sunshine start to finish without a single cloud in the sky. For most of us, those clouds were sort of locked up towards Indiana, Dubois, Franklin, where there's still some cloud cover and that also helped keep temperatures down there. But now that we're clearing out, our temperatures are going to fall off now a little little uh, factoid about this winter so far and the start to February. Just know it's the fourth warmest start for February on record right now. We're running about 40 degrees and this is about 11 degrees above average and we're going to keep those warmer temperatures going. Now tonight we do dip into the 20s in most cases low to mid 20s for early tomorrow morning. So a frosty start here Tuesday, but with the sunshine coming in, we're going to see those temperatures creep back up into the mid to upper 40s in most cases. So a warm day. Uh, to say the least, with some bright sunshine attached all over again. And we're going to continue that warming trend right through Thursday, where we top off in the mid 50s. And that's where we're going to sit, I think, for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. But once we get Thursday night and through the weekend, even into the start of next week, we turn some rain on with these warmer temperatures. So, yeah, it's going to be warmer, but we're also going to have some rain to contend with. But uh, for the time being, the next few days, sunshine is going to be the order as high pressure is very much in control, taking care of most of the cloud cover. We did get that little push out of the northeast, bringing some clouds to the, uh, the northern parts of the viewing area. That kept temperatures down today, as I mentioned, but there's not going to be too much in the way of cloud cover here over the next several days. Uh, we're going to see sunshine again tomorrow, sunshine again on Wednesday. Wednesday, Thursday, we start to mix in some clouds in advance of Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, rain in the forecast. So uh, just know the best shots for rain hold off until Thursday night and then last right through Monday at least. So we will see a wetter setup trying to show up and also later into February, we're going to likely see a cooler setup taking over. Speaking of cool, 26 tonight, mostly clear skies, a frosty start to your day tomorrow and then through the rest of the week, the temperatures take off. We're talking some 50s Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Rain turns on Thursday night and Friday and lasts right through the remainder of the forecast Monday and next week. Those temperatures will start to drop back down.